G'day fishos and welcome back to Fish Sticks Fishing Adventures. Now today we're going to look at two tools to use to find fish. Now when you're looking for new ground, whether you're an amateur or we've got a bit of experience there, these two fantastic tools. Now there's nothing beats having experience. You can ask your friends, you can get on Google, you can get on Facebook, ask people for the fishing spots, but if you can't find fishing spots yourself, it's gonna make life a lot more difficult, and that only comes with experience. And here's a great way to get that experience. The first one is the Beacon to Beacon Guide. Now, you can either buy that for a printed copy at the shops for around $30 or so, uh, otherwise you can actually find it as a PDF online for free. You can save it to your tablet, you can save it to your phone, you can save it to your computer, you can print it out. Or you can go buy the proper copy. Now I think this is a fantastic tool to look for structure. Another fantastic tool is Google Earth. You might just think, oh yeah, it's good for satellites and satellite photos, but it's not just that. You can hone into structure, you can look at different tides, you can even check out probable tidal flows as well. A fantastic way to find where fish will be hiding near structure, or bait may be sitting, so the bigger fish will be there chomping on those guys. So stay tuned and check out the episode. So you should be pretty familiar with Google Earth or Google Maps. Well worth the effort on your Android devices or your Apple devices. So you can actually just bring that up there and use your GPS on your phone to mark where you are. We'll get on to that one a little bit later on, but we've got Beacon to Beacon. So just Google Beacon to Beacon, you've got a couple of different uh, links here. The first one brings up a list of different regions throughout Queensland. You can go further up as well, I guess. Uh, and you've got a bit of a choice just there. The second one that I clicked goes to Moreton Bay for the south region. You go Brimaree uh, River, there's Moreton Bay further along, uh, Pumblestone Passage, there's a couple of different links there. And looking at the first one, the Beacon to Beacon Guide for Southern Moreton Bay. So coming down here you can see the different maps and where they show. Now I tend to fish over here in near Waterloo Bay, Raby Bay, near Green Island, uh, out towards Manly. Now, that's not a bad little map there, it shows you a few different things to look for, but you look for structure, like Tuning Fork Shoal over here. You can see, coming from Raby Bay up towards Wellington Point, around the Hybers Marker there, uh, near the Thorpe Marker, going up to Green Island to the North Point, around to the South Point. Uh, sorry, the North Point's over there. You can see structure, you can clearly see that the depth changes quite rapidly, so you know there's structure there. So if I was going to hit, hit out in a kayak, or head out in the kayak, I would definitely come straight out of here, out of Wellington Point, and just at the end of the markers, you know there is structure left and right, and you can start fishing that, and you don't need a sounder to find it. You can come down and look at uh, the changes down here in Tingalpa Creek. Actually, the next one comes in and shows us a bit more detail, but you can look at those low tide marks. You know where to fish. You can see the leaders coming out of there from uh, Aquatic Paradise. See them coming out of Tin, uh, Tinny Creek fantastic opportunity to find structure just like that and you can again you can use your mobile phone to use that as a GPS check out applications like uh, GPS essentials that's a free one I used to use that in my kayak I used to use that in my tinny now let's pop over to Google Earth so we can zoom in towards towards Raby Bay things to look for is this button just up here it gives us a historical account of the photos in this particular area so we'll move a little bit further north. So we've got Waterloo Bay just there, and we've got Green Island and Wellington Point. Now we can see that structure through there, the lights and the darks, and popping over here, that's what we're looking at along there. Now, we know we come across here, there's the channel coming out. See the darker patches there, you know the end of the channel, there's structure. We kind of discussed that a little bit earlier. 
but the other cool button up here shows us the historical records of the photos taken in that area. So we can go back, I think about three or four back, we might get a decent one. Oh, not too good. Oh, it's not too bad there. You can see that's clearer water, that's close to high tide. Uh, you can see that this will probably be high and dry. You can see again that really, really clear line there for the um, structure. I think the Hybers marker would be, I think it's that little dot just there. And the Thorpe one should be over about here somewhere. But you can look at there, you can find the structure, and you would basically work out as the tide is dropping. The water sitting in this area here and deeper spots like this are going to start draining maybe this direction. It's going to carry bits and pieces, bits of bait across there, and your larger fish will be holding along here. So you're looking for things like that. And again, you don't need the GPS to find it. You can jump on your Google Maps, turn it to your satellite photos, paddle out there, or go out there in the uh, tinny and find that little spot like that. And you can do the same thing here with Green Island. You can clearly see the structure there looking at the seven metre mark. Now, I think we can go back a little bit further. It's another four or five, I believe. They're not always that clear. But what we're looking for is a different tide. So we know it looks like a sort of a high tide for the photos. We want to find a low tide where you've got more exposed ground. That's probably a bit clearer there. You can see it's a lower tide, all the exposed ground through here. So you know where your deeper areas are, just over there. You can probably even pop over to Tingalpa Creek and you can start to see structure appearing around here around there and a little bit further here so there are places you'd probably want to look at high tide as the tide's going out so you're going to have water rushing through here and you're going to have a lot of bait rushing across here and you might find floodies hiding along here you'll probably notice it's going to be deeper on the bends so you're going to have more rushing water there you might find your floodies there you can see some sandbars appearing there you can look through here and you notice well that's almost high and dry there you can probably find the nice holes just in this area just over here and finding these bits and pieces comes with experience the easiest way to find it is looking in Google Maps Came up, coming over here to Aquatic Paradise see the boats coming out of there but you can see where it's high and dry you can look for structure even here the little creek coming through so you're going to fish that area over there in Waterloo Bay like I often do you know there's, there's a bit of a uh, structure there you know fish might hold there so you can do your drifts from east to west and west to east and hit that area a little bit harder and you'll probably find natural drains as well so areas out here there's a sedimentary pond just over here so you might find that's going to be draining out here somewhere and you could probably pop, even walk down that low tide you'll find structure there's some more examples there so you might want to fish along those areas shouldn't give away too many of my secrets but even coming out here um, land based you can see it's clearly deeper along these areas just here when that high tide comes in your water's going to be rushing over that sand barrel or the tombolo there so you know you might want to be fishing there you know deeper water if you can walk out there you might want to cast there it's actually decently deep across there as well so Google Earth is a fantastic tool for this you can pop over to Raby Bay and you can already see structure out there already some nice areas there you can see the boat ramp across here the channel uh, Empire Point through there so use Google Earth it's free use um, the beacon to beacon it's free well worth the effort find the ground use your experience or develop your experience find have a theory test it out and apply that and keep applying that until you catch all the fish you need so the last trick uh, last but not least is something quite simple you can drop a marker so for instance you know you might want to fish we'll say this little area just inside here you should zoom in a little bit further be a bit more exact you can see a bit of the sand there deeper area there once you drop your marker wherever you're going to move you can have your longitude and latitude up here so you can punch that into your GPS essentials or whatever app you're going to use well worth the effort. Now the last tricky thing I suppose you can do is find a photo where you've got a lot of boats out there and a lot of boats fishing and look exactly where they're fishing. No rocket science to that so we can zip forward a bit further. 
there we go so we can see yeah there's a few over here some near bit of sandbar over the oh, no, sandbar but the area over there you probably zip over here and you might even find Harry Atkinson's with a lot of boats around it see a few boats troubling across there zip forward a bit further well anyway you get the point by moving back and forth through the historical record you'll find different tides you know, and different tidal flows boats in different places check it out best of luck and tight lines